Hi, welcome back. It's been a really long time since we posted a video, but today we have a really special topic. Can a mega yacht be green? The Black Pearl, at 107 meters long and worth nearly 3,000 square meters of sail area. It was built in 2016. Can this boat really sail the oceans without any fossil fuel? Let's find out. My name is Justin Christo. I'm one of two captains on board. I work uh, on a rotation. I do uh, 10 weeks on board and then 10 weeks off. Mm -hmm. Been on board for just a, well, about four years now. And um, <clears throat> I've been in the audience industry for uh, coming on 24, 25 years. And my name is Richard, Richard Tatlow, Chief Engineer. Um, one of uh, two Chief Engineers on board. I've been on board for about seven years. Oh, welcome guys. Of course, many people talk about sailing assist yachts such as sailing yacht A, or concept cargo ships with wings to reduce fuel consumption. But can a mega yacht make passage under only sail? It seems really impossible to move a boat larger than an American football field only by the wind. Well, we can we can sail in, in almost any any breeze. You know, we can get going even if there's only four or five knots. It's not spectacular. We're not making you know, we're not breaking any records. That's for sure. But we will have forward motion. Um, Realistically, we want uh, anywhere between eight and ten knots to, okay. to get going. So the um, the percentage that we try to achieve whenever we go off is off sailing is is a hundred percent. Nice. You know? <laughs> it, it it is achievable, and we will be able to do it. At, at the moment, our best record is ninety six percent from birth to birth, and that's over a thousand mile voyage, nautical mile voyage from. Gibraltar to um, La Spezia in Italy and that's including the reason we had the 50 or the 40 miles that we were under power was uh, during pilotage so we had to have a pilot on board to leave the berth and we had to have a pilot in for the 10 mile run into La Spezia so you know 100% is achievable and we're getting very close it's uh, very common that we'll do over 80% and uh, almost never below 80% on any passage. It, it's really quite unbelievable. I don't think very many boats, even small sailboats, are able to achieve what we can do. The record we have at the moment is high 23s, I think just shy of 24, maybe 23.8s. Um, she's moving pretty good. I personally have had her up in, uh, in 21, 22. Yeah, there's all sorts of races you, you can take part in with, with sailboats. And obvious, the obvious um, sailboat races that we would do very well at are long ocean passages, yeah. some of the um, you know transatlantic races. Um, around the boys, racing is, is difficult. She's truly a ship and not a, a small boat. So maneuvering would have to be well outside the fleet. So we wouldn't necessarily be as competitive as we want to be. But one that we always hope to, to go to is the St. Barts Bucket. Um, so in terms of uh, the solar on the sails, the idea and the concept is is to have solar actually embedded into the sails. Um, now for that, the reason why it's not implemented right now is because there was just concerns about the furling arrangement of how it was going to furl and the constant furling and then pulling it, pulling the sail back out and how long the, the solar was going to last mm -hmm. for. Um, all the cabling's there, we have everything in place and ready. and. Uh, very much looking forward to um, some new technology coming out in terms of actually having the solar embedded into the sail cloth. The Dyna rigs are what I'd refer to as a modern square rig mast. So we have, uh, they're freestanding carbon fiber coming at about um, the quite large. We're almost 70 meters tall with the flagpoles on top and they <clears throat> weigh it. They come in at a total weight of about 24 tons per, per mast. We have five sails per mast, and they are in mast furling. What that does is it breaks what would be a very large single main sail or head sail down into five more manageable sized um, sails. So it's much easier to reef. And of course, the, um, the, the, road, the freestanding rotating mast makes it very easy to, to handle the sails, to sheet them in and trim them for the wind conditions. We were able to set all the sails on board in about seven minutes. So to put it into perspective, three masts, 15 sails, all out, set in seven minutes, and then we can furl them in about the same amount of time as well. The, the technology that's on board in terms of regeneration <clears throat> and the electric propulsion is fantastic, but I'd like to take this opportunity to mention that none of it happens without the Dynarigs. You know, you have to sail 
you have to move, you have to be going through the water and you have to be doing it consistently. There aren't any real true sailing yachts out there of similar size or even the smaller 50 meters and up who sail anywhere near as much time or distance that we do. So they have sails that are very expensive, you know, up in the hundreds of thousands per sail, hundreds of thousands of dollars per sail, where, um, you know, our sails are cheap and they're easy to, to, uh, to use. So because of the DynaRig, the other technology on board actually becomes feasible. The, the regeneration technology just wouldn't work with uh, traditional Marconi rig sails. The briefing plan on, on board the boat is, is pretty comprehensive and it's, it's all laid out by the naval architects and, um, and ex the, our experience over the years of sailing the Maltese Falcon and the Black Pearl. So, um, you know, with, the, with having a sail plan of 15 different sails, um, you have a multitude of different sail configurations you can set up and it, it's very safe and easy to, to reef. So the configuration with our energy storage system that we can use with you is, is that we can have the energy storage system as a prime, as, as the prime source. So yes, we can come in um, just under full electric, just on the energy storage system. We can come in using our main engines, just on diesel. Um, we can also maneuver the boat with a dual system where we can have the electric um, boosting into the gearbox and using the diesel main engines. Um, and we can also just come in alongside um, if the energy storage system bank was completely depleted and we didn't have any um, energy storage within the batteries, we can just come alongside just using the generators, uh, basically using the diesel electric. We can generate up to a maximum of about 536 um, horsepower, um, it's roughly 400 kilowatts. Um, so our average um, house load is around about 200 to 190 kilowatts. So we can generate more than enough electricity to cover the load and also recharge our energy storage system. So you guys have an amazing boat the black, in the Black Pearl. Like, what do you love most about it? So for me, it's definitely the Dyna rigs and the sailing capabilities. The I was very lucky to be able to cross the Atlantic Ocean on the Maltese Falcon, has similar rigs. And we did a, a, um, <clears throat> a full passage from Gibraltar to St. Bards where we didn't turn the main engines on once. I'm now on a boat where we have the capabilities of doing the same crossing, but not running any generators as well, and essentially crossing completely fossil fuel free. To me, that's that's got to be the holy grail. Getting back to the square rig ship days, clipper ship and doing some pretty incredible, amazing long ocean passages completely under sail. For myself, it's to be having the energy storage system on board and the opportunity to be able to regenerate into that while sailing along is is brilliant, mm. it's, uh, it's the way forward. Yeah. Um, if you want to cut down your carbon footprint on using diesel generators, it has to be using the wind to regenerate and then put it into the energy storage system. Well, Black Pearl is one of the most exciting boats, I think, in the world for me. And I love that seeing the concept of like, anything from size of Black Pearl all the way down to yacht our size, to be able to be sailing first, you know, being environmentally friendly, being able to be a time center of the energy, being able to sail to regenerate or solar to regenerate the power in the boat that you use in the house. So I'm super excited that you know, there's yachts like that on the, in, the, in the world, and ours as well. Um, so I guess coming back to our the original question, can you actually sail, can you have a yacht size of a black or a 100 plus meter yacht, a size of a football field, can you really sail under, under just by the wind? The absolute answer is yes. You can do that for thousand nautical miles. So it's actually amazing. We can do it for 3,000 nautical miles. We can do it for 5,000 nautical miles, and, and we will. And we have. Yeah, we have. Yeah, perfect. I can't yeah. wait to hear your next adventures uh, across the Atlantic, across the Pacific, maybe sometime. It's going to be amazing. Black Pearl is absolutely amazing. Thanks uh, for taking your time to come here and share the kind of experience of, of that boat with us and the rest of the audience here. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Yeah, thanks for having us on board. And it's nice to see that the technology is moving across different aspects of the yachting industry as well. Well, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll catch you next time.